On this week's MetPie Monday, it's getting awfully hot out there and I want to know what the heat index is. We'll also look at things like wind chill and apparent temperature. Welcome to another MetPie Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, I want to talk about things like apparent temperature, which could be the heat index or the wind chill. Right now, as I record this, it's summer and it's very humid and muggy where I am. And we often use heat index to say, what is the feels like temperature? It's very important if you're going to be outside doing things like athletics, though, of course, there are other metrics that we can look at as well. In the winter, wind chill becomes very important. And then we'll close out with how apparent temperature can be used to simplify looking at heat index or wind chill. So we're going to use some mesonet data. And this is a good chance to refresh our minds on how to use MetPy's calculation functions, specifically some of the weirdness that comes along with units. This is because the Python ecosystem hasn't really solved the problem of united computation yet. And so we have to do a couple tricks when we're working with things like pandas and trying to attach units to data. So let's go ahead and do our imports. So import pandas as pd, import metpy.calc as mpcalc. Remember, those are just aliases, so we don't have to type long things every time. And then from metpy.units, import units. So that's not an alias, that's saying we are going to import into our main namespace units, the one thing from metpy.units. So now those are run. Let's go ahead and read our data. If you need a refresher on this, we have some videos looking at mesonet data, but we can just pull open the data file real quick here and see we've got a couple of header rows and then a bunch of white space delimited data. So that's enough to go ahead and write up our pandas call. So our data frame is pd.readcsv. Now you might want to use read table. That would be the more traditional pandas function to use, but read table is deprecated. It's actually going to be going away in favor of read CSV, and you just tell it whatever delimiter you want to use. So you'll probably see a warning about that if you use read table, and in the future it will just error out. So we're going to use latest.mdf, skip rows, it's going to be two for our two header rows, and dlim white space is going to be true. If we look at the head of our data file, we see that we've done a pretty good job of reading it, it looks like. But I can't really tell what all of the columns are, because pandas and doing this nice, pretty interactive HTML table abbreviates them since we have so many. We have 24 columns, it tells us here. So I'm going to call df.columns and look at the columns attribute of the data frame, which will show me everything there is. And that's handy because we might need some of these in these calculations. So I'm going to start off with the heat index. So heat index is mpcalc.heat underscore index. And then we need to give it our data. So if we look at the doc string, it says it takes temperature, relative humidity, and it has this parameter mask undefined that's set to true. So this is an optional, and it says whether we should return a masked array where the values for heat index is undefined is masked out. So this means that if the temperature is not greater than 80 Fahrenheit or the relative humidity is lower than 40%, heat index doesn't apply, and it would mask that. Maybe we want to just go ahead and pass through. If heat index doesn't apply, just give me the current temperature because I'm interested in what it feels like at these locations if I walk outside right now. But before we go ahead and play with some of those parameters, let's just get the basic calculation working. So we have air, temperature, and then we have relative humidity. This does not work because we have not given any unit information to the calculation, so it doesn't know what to do exactly. So you say, okay, that's great, we can do this. Units.degc, and relative humidity, 
is going to be units.percent because it is given in the file as a percent. So we run that and it still doesn't work. And here's where I see a lot of people start scratching their heads because it says that you didn't give me any units, but I clearly gave units here. So I'm gonna go ahead and line wrap this to make it a little easier to follow. What we need to do is call dot values here. This is because these are pandas data series and they don't know how to deal with you attaching units to them. Now it works. So if we look at the values of heat index, I'm just gonna go ahead and put print around it. This gives me a little bit better representation. Uh, the notebook will try to do a fancier representation of unit arrays that in this case replaces masked values with zeros, which can be kind of confusing. So these dashes or masked values are places where the heat index didn't matter today. But maybe I want to know, okay, well then what's the temperature at those places? So we look back at our doc string, mask undefined, mask undefined is false. Now those are filled in with just whatever the current temperature at that site was. So you can see a pretty warm mid-afternoon across most of Oklahoma where this data is from. Now let's do a quick example with wind chill. So wind chill, mpcalc dot wind chill. And if we look at what it takes, it takes temperature, wind speed, and there's this flag face level winds. So if you are measuring the winds at face level or the two meter level, you set that to true and there's an extra multiplier of 1.5 that gets added. The formula was originally designed for 10 meter wind speeds. And of course we have all the references in the docs if you want to go read the papers and why these formula are the way they are. So we're gonna use our t air dot values and it is in degrees Celsius. Then don't forget we've got wind speed, WSPD, where it's helpful to print out all of those columns up above. And here, instead of using units dot, I'm going to use units and then in parentheses, M slash S as a string. So this will go ahead and parse that string into meters per second. It makes entering things like these compound units really fast and easy. So if I do that, we see that we had some invalid values. That's because if wind speed isn't being reported by the mesonet, it uses minus 999. So we could go and do some data pre-cleaning there if we needed to. And we see that we've got pretty much everything masked. Uh, obviously some bad data here showing a minus 11, which it's definitely not today. So this would be something where we could go through and maybe QC our data if there were, um, elements that were not masked when we expected everything to be masked. But again, then we could just also say mask undefined is false and get all of the current values. Now you'll notice that these happen to return in degrees Celsius. These happen to return in degrees Fahrenheit just because the way some of these calculations work internally. We can always recast that to something though. So I could say windchill dot two, and then whatever I want, say degrees Fahrenheit. And now I have everything back in Fahrenheit. And this is that more pretty printing of unit arrays that happens in the notebooks. The last thing is apparent temperature. So apparent temperature is a combination of these. It says, is the wind chill or the heat index valid at this location? If so, we're gonna use that. So this would be something that would be season independent if you just want to know what is the feels like temperature or apparent temperature. So apparent temperature, mpcalc.apparent temperature. Again, tab completion there, save yourself the keystrokes. And I know it's gonna use T air. Let's look at the doc string. So it needs temperature, relative humidity, and wind speed. And that face level winds flag is also there because it could be using wind speed or it could be using relative humidity depending on if heat index or wind chill makes sense at that location. So tair.values, units.degc. 
relative humidity dot values times units dot percent. And you notice how my syntax highlighting was a little off here. That's a good hint to go back and fix a typo. Then we had wind speed dot values times units. And again, this was the compound unit meters per second that we were parsing out. We have that same warning, but that's okay. And there we go. Now we have apparent temperatures. So I hope that you found this useful and as a good reminder on how to work with units and calculations in MetPy, as well as how to do something that might be seasonally relevant to you right now, and some of the weird tricks that you have to know about working with things like pandas data frames and data series while at the same time using units. I hope that you found this useful and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.